In recent years, Catholic Communications has paired with John Paul Tours to offer local faithful a chance to visit sacred sites throughout the world. This past July was no exception as pilgrims from our diocese were treated to many beautiful sites in Eastern Europe. Part two of our pilgrimage series today finds the pilgrims enjoying the sights and sounds of Krakow, Poland, including Wawel Castle and places that mark the early history of St. John Paul II. With our jet lag behind us, we arrive in the beautiful city of Kraków, one of the oldest cities in Poland. This beautiful and magnificent city of Kraków is located on the banks of the Vistula River. This city dates back to the 7th century and was the capital of Poland from the 11th century until the 16th century. Here, the kings of Poland resided. They reigned over this country and made this city royal. And it still is royal today with its beauty that surrounds it. In the year 2000, the European Union dubbed Kraków the cultural capital of Poland. Indeed it is. We're standing here on the famous Franciszka Street number three, which is the apostolic palace for the Archbishop of Kraków. In this palace is where John Paul II, then Cardinal Wojtyła, lived as the Archbishop of Kraków. But also it is historic because this is where young Karol Wojtyła studied for the seminary in this residence. This chapel was recently renovated under Archbishop Cardinal Dziwisz. The only thing that was not renovated in this chapel was the floor. Why? Because it was there that Karol Wojtyla prostrated himself and was ordained a priest on November 1st, 1946. We're walking through the park here at Kraków and recalling how many times Karol Wojtyla, Father Karol Wojtyla and Bishop Karol Wojtyla would have walked down this very sidewalk as he came to teach here at the seminary in Kraków, where he taught philosophy and many other subjects. And so here is the seminary for the Archdiocese of Kraków. Behind me is the Wawel Cathedral. It is the cathedral of the Archbishop of Kraków. And in this cathedral are buried the kings of Poland, the president of Poland, and St. Stanislaus, bishop and martyr, who is the patron saint of Poland. The Wawel Cathedral Basilica is more than 900 years old. Walking into the cathedral, we are greeted by an altar with a great canopy. Here, the body of St. Stanislaus is entombed in a silver sarcophagus. He was the Bishop of Kraków from 1030 to 1079 and martyred by King Boleslas II. The crypt beneath the cathedral holds the tombs of Polish kings, national heroes, generals and revolutionaries. It's here at this altar that Father Karol Wojtyla celebrated his first mass on November 2nd, 1946. The Wawel Castle, now a museum, was residence to Polish monarchs during the 16th and 17th centuries. Continuing our tour, we walk down the Wawel Hill through the streets of Kraków. Here, we experience the beauty of the city center known as the Rynek, a grand square full of shops and cafes. But our real focus here is the breathtaking basilica, which holds a prominent place in the square the Koszczu Mariacki, or St. Mary's. After the Tartar raids of the 13th century left the original church in ruins, St. Mary's was rebuilt in Catholic style on the existing foundations and was consecrated in 1320. In the early 15th century, the towers took the iconic form they have today, when the northern tower was raised to over 260 feet and became a watchtower for the city. It is from here that the Hey Now Mariatsky, the city's famous bugle call, is played every hour on the hour. 
the tune ironically breaks off mid-melody in honor of the trumpeter who was shot in the neck with an arrow while belatedly warning the city of Mongol invaders. Inside, the altarpiece, the stained glass windows of the name, and the blue starred ceiling take our breath away. The magnificent wooden altarpiece was the principal work of 15th century German artist Witt Stvosch. It took 12 painstaking years to complete and depicts the Virgin Mary among the apostles. In the middle of the square is Cloth Hall, once a major center of international trade. Traveling merchants would meet here to discuss business and to barter. During its golden age in the 15th century, the hall was the source of exotic imports from the East. Spices, silk, leather, and wax. Now the hall is filled with vendors selling goods to tourists. Welcome to Vilichka. This is a town known for its famous salt mines. Opened in the 13th century, this mine produced table salt continuously until 2007, as one of the world's oldest salt mines in operation. It is one of the most famous attractions in Poland. The mine is over 10 football fields deep and is 178 miles long and you will never forget the trip down. We are told there's 100 steps to the salt mine, and I think after about 1,700 steps down, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, finally, we finally got there. Right. Uh, but again, incredible, when you think about how these uh, beautiful figures and carvings and even the chapels were really you know, made by uh, these folks out of the salt, yeah. out of the rock, uh, it's mind-boggling to see it, but it, just a beautiful experience. The sanctuary of St. John Paul II is situated in the Wagivniki neighborhood of Kraków, some two miles south of Old Town. The principal part of the shrine is an octagonal basement known as the Lower Church or the Church of the Relics. Although windowless, it looks cheerful thanks to bright lighting and pale decor. Vividly colored pictures depict events from the pontificate of Pope John Paul II namely his visits to the world's most famous Marian sanctuaries. The centerpiece of the shrine is a simple marble altar. It contains a vial with the relic of blood from St. John Paul II displayed in a glass case. I hope you enjoyed our tour, and don't forget to join us next week for part two of our stop in Kraków. We'll visit the Shrine of the Divine Mercy and learn of the interesting link it has to our Springfield Diocese, as well as a somber tour through the death camps of Auschwitz and Birkenau.